Hello and welcome to Start Tracking Purchasing Requisitions in Microsoft Dynamics GP. My name is Kayla Schilling and I'm a System Engineer with the Resource Group. What is GP Workflow? Workflows allow you to take GP processes and require approval in order for the process to complete. You can route workflows based on conditions that you set. Prior to GP 2013 R2, you ran GP workflows on top of SharePoint. Because SharePoint was required, supporting the product was difficult, and installation was time-consuming and required a technical resource. What is Workflow 2.0? It is a new workflow system released with GP 2013 R2. Additional workflows have also been added in GP 2015. It allows you to take a process and route them for approval based on specific criteria. The workflow and setup is inside a GP, has been simplified, and SharePoint is no longer required for the setup. GP Web Services is now optional for the workflow. It allows you to approve inside of emails. GP 2013 R2 has released four workflows for the GP client purchase requisition approval, purchase order approval, payroll time card approval, and timesheet approval. It removes the SharePoint dependency for the workflow types. With the release of GP 2015 is added additional workflow functionality. You now have general ledger batch, receivables batch, payables batch, vendor, employee profile, employee skills, direct deposit, W-4, and expense report approval. The goals for the setup for workflow is to allow synergy with the web client, remove the SharePoint dependency, improve the design experience by having the product inside of GP, and to increase flexibility. The benefits of having workflow is to provide additional controls over posting by requiring approval based on certain criteria. It enforces the review process for certain processes inside a GP. It also tracks all workflow actions such as submitting, approving, rejecting, and comments with timestamps. This allows you to create things like smart lists that can show what has been approved by whom and at what time it was approved. Notifications may be sent through email to define workflow users for status changes. Approvers are not required to be set up in GP. Windows credentials are what's used for determining security in the approval process. So if you have web services set up and you allow approval through emails, it'll just go through with your Windows credentials. A sample PO requisition that I'm going to be showing today has Ken as a warehouse supervisor. He will enter the requisition. If the requisition is less than 5,000, no action will be needed. It'll automatically be approved. If he submits a requisition above 5,000, it'll automatically go to Phyllis, his manager, and she will go ahead and approve the requisition. If that requisition is above 25,000, it'll then be routed to Sarah for approval. If it is less than 25,000, it'll just go to the approval status. So today I'm going to go ahead and set up three requisitions. And uh, one of those requisitions will be less than 4,000. The next one will be under 25,000. And then the third one's going to be above 25,000. Okay, so we'll go to purchasing and then purchase requisitions. So the first one I'm going to uh, put through, it's going to be a processor. I'm going to go ahead and select my site ID. Select my vendor. My quantity. Now for this one, I'm going to, instead of have it be 16, I'm going to go with 4,000 so that it's less than that 5,000. And then I'm going to go ahead and submit it. Now when you submit, you can put comments in there like, please approve. Now 
Now, since it's been submitted, I'll go ahead and take a look at it. And because it was less than 5,000, it says no action is needed. I'm going to go ahead and create a second one, this time for 12,000, so it's above the 10,000, but less than the 25,000. So once again, I'm going to do processor, site ID, vendor, and I will have one processor that's 12,000. And then I will go ahead and submit it. Now in this requisition, you will see that it is pending approval by the manager. The third requisition I'm going to set up will be above 25,000. So I'm going to select once again processor. Have my site and my vendor. I'm going to order two at sixteen thousand, so it's thirty-two thousand. Once again, it's pending approval by manager. So now I'm going to bring up the manager. Go to purchasing, and then in the navigation list, purchasing requisitions pending approval, you will see that I have both of them, once for 12,000, once for 32,000. You can select one at a time, or you can select both, and you can either approve, reject, or delegate. I'm gonna go ahead and approve them both. So now they are gone. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at those requisitions once again. I'll first look at the one for 12,000. It is now completed. This time we can go ahead and look at the other one, which is 32,000. And that one now has been routed to the director because it was over 25,000. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up the director. And now it is listed here in the navigation list. I'm going to go ahead and approve. Now there's three different ways you can approve uh, these requisitions. You can do it in the navigation list. You can do it inside the window and you can also do it in the email. For the requisitions, uh, you may not have permissions to the window, so you may only want to go ahead and do it in the email or in the navigation list. The purchase orders, you can do it within the window, email, and also the navigation list. Okay, so the next one I'm going to show is purchase order approval. So let's go back to purchasing, go with purchase order entry, and for this one I'm going to go ahead and create two purchase orders. One of them is going to be above 10,000 that will go to the director, and one will be below 10,000 and that will go to the direct manager. I believe I actually set it to 20,000 instead of 10,000. So go standard, vendor ID, I'm going to select processor, each, we're going to order one of them. I'm going to select my site ID here. Okay. OK, 
Okay, the next one I'm going to set up is going to be above uh, the 20,000 mark. Go with one case. Okay, and then I will go ahead and submit. Now the manager has to approve all of them, so next we're going to close out of here and go to the manager. We'll go to purchase orders pending approval. You'll see that both of them are here and they're listed as manager for approval. We'll select both of them and then go ahead and approve. So they've both succeeded, so we're going to refresh. And now it's pending user action by the director. If I select this, you'll see it won't let me approve it because it's now at the director level. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the director and go over to the purchase order pending approval. I will select and go ahead and approve. It is now succeeded. So if I go back as a submitter, I will be able to see that the purchase orders have been approved. So it's completed. And then the other one is also completed. Okay, so the setup for workflow is completely inside of GP. Email approval is included and that would require web services. You can create multiple workflows for each workflow type, but only one can be active at a time. The options inside the setup for the workflow is to send notifications for completed actions, allow approver to delegate tasks, allow originator to be an approver, require an approver, use alternate final approver, and action to take for an overdue task. So I'm going to go ahead and go over the setup screens for the workflow setup. The first one is the email setup. You go to Tools, Setup, System, and Workflow Setup. Inside of here, you go ahead and check the box to enable email for the workflow. You specify your SMTP settings. You specify the authentication. And if you're going to allow approval via email, you would also check the box to enable email actions. Here's where you would specify your web services server. The next screen is the calendar. You go to Tools, Setup, Company, Workflow, and then Workflow Calendar. This screen is where you set up what your hours of operations are and also what days of the week that your company works. You would also want to specify your holidays. This calendar can be used to help determine when a workflow expires. The next setup is email message. You go to Tools, Setup, Company, Workflow, and then Email Message Setup. This is where you will uh, go ahead and change the templates for the emails for the different types of notifications that you can set up. You will see in the uh, screen that there are certain fields that are being pulled in, and it will auto-populate with data when it sends out the notification. The next screen is the workflow maintenance screen. You go to tools, setup, company, workflow, workflow maintenance. On this screen, you will set up your different types of workflows, set up your workflow managers, set up the steps, and also set your options. So the steps to set up the workflow is you would first enable email, which is optional. Configure the workflow calendar, which is also optional. 
set up your email message templates, which is optional, and then set up the workflow type. You assign the managers to the workflow type you will create, click New Workflow, enter name, save the workflow, add steps, configure options, set overdue options, check active box to make workflow active, and then save the workflow. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead as a director and I'm going to go ahead and show you the different setup screens. So we're going to go to Tools, Setup, System, and Workflow Setup. Here's where you would go ahead and specify your SMTP settings to enable email for notifications. And down here is where you would set your different or your web services URL so that you can allow approval inside of emails. The next screen is Tools, Setup, Company, Workflow, and then Workflow Calendar. Here is where you set up what days of the week you work, what your hours are, and then also what your holidays are for the year. That screen will be used to determine expiration on your workflows. The next screen is Tools, Setup, Company, Workflow, and then Email Message Setup. Inside of here, you will see the different types of templates that you have. I'll go ahead and go to Workflow Assign PO Approval. And in here, you will see where there's brackets and percent signs. That's where the uh, auto-populate information will be pulled in. You can also add fields to the uh, message through the document lines. You can select the message type, the series, and the doc type. The last screen I'm going to show is the workflow maintenance tools, setup, company, workflow, and then workflow maintenance. Now the first thing you're going to want to set up is to select your series. So in the, our case we have purchasing. And then you're going to want to set up who your manager is. Your workflow manager is going to be Windows credentials. So you would go in here and then specify the domain and the user ID. You can press tab and then it'll auto search. Click add and then click OK. So now I have two workflow managers for this. For the purchase order approval, we had set up the following. We had set it up as PO webinar. We allowed the originators to be approver to take no action when a task is overdue. For our steps, we had first set manager approval was always required, and that the assignment would be assigned to the workflow originator's direct manager and expire in eight hours. Now you have different options for the assignment of these workflows. You can assign people and groups from Active Directory, you can assign a hierarchy, which is also from Active Directory, and you can start it from the originator, the manager, or the alternate final approver, and then you can assign it to direct manager, skip level manager, or you can specify the number of levels to skip up to. And that hierarchy is set completely in Active Directory. You could also specify by workflow role. So it could either be assigned to the originator, the manager, or the alternate final approver. In this case, we did the direct manager. We also specified it as a first step. The next step is to uh, automatically route it to the director when a purchase order subtotal is greater than and includes 20,000. Now with these steps, you can also set and or, or parameters for your uh, different sets. So you can say and and then select a field 
and then you can also uh, use different parameters like contains, does not contain, begins with, is, is not, is greater than and includes, is less than and includes, and is empty. The other workflow we showed was the purchase requisition approval. On this workflow, we didn't really set any options, but we did set our steps. The first step is when a purchase requisition amount is greater than and includes 5,000, it would then go ahead and route to the workflow originator's direct manager. Next step was where a purchase requisition is greater than and includes $25,000, it would go to the director. To set up a new workflow, you would go ahead and select the workflow type. So this is purchase order approval. Click new workflow. Give it a title. And then I usually save the workflow after I give it a title. And then I add steps. You go here and click New Step. And here on the condition, you would specify whether it's always required or if it is required only when following conditions are met. So to set conditions, I would select the arrow over and I would select where, and in the case of ours, we did subtotal. So I'll scroll down to subtotal. Where subtotal is greater than and includes than 10,000. Add, okay. And then I select who is assigned to. I'll just go ahead and go with direct manager. And for the completion policy, I can select only one response is needed, majority must approve, or all must approve. And you do that more with a group approval. Now, since this is the first step, it is going to not allow an order selection, and it is the only step. If I were to add a second step, then you could uh, specify the order and whether it's a nested step or if it's its own first step. So I'll go ahead and save that step. And then I'll select options. I could take no action, escalate to next prover, escalate to a specific person, or automatically reject an overdue task. I can send notifications for completed actions if I've worked or if I've email set up. I can allow approvers to delegate tasks, allow originators to be an approver, always require at least one approver, and use alternate final approver. Normally, if I do not have an active workflow, I can just check the box as active and then go ahead and save the workflow. But since I already have this one active and there's uh, workflows associated with it, I cannot activate the other workflows. So that is the setup for the workflows. And that also concludes our webinar. So if you have any questions or if you'd like to have a demo or even just discuss the options for your company, please send an email to KaylaS at resgroup.com. Thank you for your time.